A pleasant good morning to Honorable John Brisenio, Prime Minister of Belize, his ministers, Minister of State, and members, to the Leader of the Opposition, his members, and Madam Speaker. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who through Jesus Christ has revealed your glory to all nations, please protect and preserve Belize, our beloved country. God of might, wisdom, and justice, please assist our Belizean government and people with your Holy Spirit of counsel and fortitude. Let the light of your divine wisdom direct their plans and endeavors so that with your help, we may attain our just objectives. With your guidance, may all our endeavors tend to peace, social justice, liberty, national happiness, the increase of industry, sobriety, and useful knowledge. We pray, O God of mercy, for all of us, that we may be blessed in the knowledge and sanctified in the observance of your most holy law, that we may be preserved in union and in that peace which the world itself cannot give. And after enjoying the blessings of this life, please admit us, dear Lord, to that eternal reward that you have prepared for those who love you. Amen. Announcement, announcement by the speaker. Good morning, members. There are a few announcements I would like to make this morning. First, we are doing this um, also with virtual, virtual participation. This is a first for this parliament. Uh, therefore, it's a first test as live as we go. Secondly, on Monday, this coming Monday at 2 p.m., the National Assembly of Belize, presided over by the Speaker of the House and the President of the Senate, will be embarking also on another first, which is the signing of an MOU with the Belize Archives and Records Service. The purpose of that, each year, the National Assembly, since 2020, has tried to contribute to the cel celebratory month, if you will, of September, marking the independence of Belize's anniversary. This year, the National Assembly will be, for the first time, taking out the instrument of independence that was handed over in 1981 and be handing it over to the Belize Archives and Records Service for proper preservation and storage. In addition to that, they, the National Assembly of Belize has also decided that it is timely that the parliamentary records of the National Assembly be done in a more modern fashion and that it be safeguarded as well. This will also be done with the support of the Belize Records and Service Unit. On the third matter, As the presiding officer for the House of Representatives, it is incumbent upon me to inform members, as well as members of the public, why the proposed motion of no confidence, which was asked to be tabled at this House meeting, was not tabled. The reason for doing this during the announcement is to ensure that there is no misunderstanding on the determination that was made by the chair. The private member's motion 
submitted by the Leader of Opposition, Member from Mesopotamia, infringed on Standing Order 38.5 in relation to the fifth recital of the motion by imputing improper motives in respect of a minister and a minister of state. The motion also made assertions of malfeasance against the Prime Minister, a civil wrong for which no court of law has made any such pronouncement. That was stated in the ninth and tenth recitals. In addition, the substantive part of the private member's motion sought to have debate on the lawfulness or otherwise of a matter, that is, the Portico Agreement, which is the subject matter of an existing claim before the High Court. As members may be aware, on the 11th of July, 2023, three companies filed a claim in which the claimants are asking the court to pronounce the lawfulness of the Portico Agreement. It is a cardinal principle of our constitutional democracy that Parliament will not engage in a debate on a subject matter which is before the courts for determination. Erskine May, the authoritative text on parliamentary proceedings, the UK Parliament Online Edition at paragraph 2011, explains that no matter awaiting adjudication by a court of law, that is, matters sub judice, should be brought before the House. It further states that a notice of motion relating to matters sub judice should be withdrawn from the order paper and may be reinserted to matter may be reinserted when the matter has been determined, and that signatures may not be added to motions relating to matters which are sub judice until the cases have been disposed of. This parliamentary rule finds support in Standing Order 38.2. This covers both the content of speech, this covers both the content of speech and the subject matter currently before the courts which cannot be raised in a motion. The member was advised that in keeping with Standing Order 25-2A, based on the findings above, the No Confidence Motion 2023 will not be placed on the other paper for this House meeting, as it contravenes the above-mentioned Standing Orders. It was incumbent upon me to share that in my announcement, members and members of the public, because it is important that this House is governed by rules, and the rules must be adhered to. When they're not adhered to, the Speaker has that determination to make. It is also important, members, that precedent is not set that can affect future parliaments whereby it is allowed to contravene flagrantly and openly the standing orders of the House. To complete this process, it is necessary for me to now subsequently inform you of the response received. The response was sent to the clerk and a at bna.gov.bz. The email has been accessed and opened by all staff of Parliament. Greetings. The email was sent at 6.14 yesterday from the Leader of Opposition, and it states, Greetings. You, Madam Speaker, have exposed yourself to be a complete waste of time as Speaker of the Honorable House. I ask the galleries I will ask the galleries, as per Standing Order 87-4, you are to remain silent. If you do not, I will have to ask the police to do their duty and ask the galleries to be cleared. I continue. You repeatedly act as a shield for the government, shamelessly misinterpreting and misapplying the standing orders to protect the Prime Minister and his government from public scrutiny and accountability. 
When the UDP was in government, we were not afraid of the opposition. We allowed for no confidence motions as we are true protectors of democracy. With each erroneous ruling you expose yourself as a complete biased speaker that will stop at nothing to protect the PUP government. I was foolish to believe a former PUP senator and candidate would be anything other than a partisan hack. Signed, Honorable Dr. Shine Barrow, Leader of Opposition, House of Representatives, MP for Mesopotamia. Members, and I will ask those in the gallery to kindly give the respect to this House and the Chair and to be silent. This is a grave matter, members. I will remind all members that this chair does not make determinations on the whim. This chair seeks the legal counsel of the Attorney General's office. As you all know, that the parliament does not yet have its own parliamentary legal counsel. In addition to that, the chair seeks the guidance from the well-experienced staff of Parliament. In addition to that, the Chair looks to the precedents that have been set. In this case, there was a no-confidence motion tabled in the previous Parliament, and it is clear that that no-confidence motion did meet the threshold where it did not contravene standing orders. Members should also be aware that this Chair also looks to the precedent practices set not only in other Commonwealth jurisdictions, but by the experiences of other speakers who have had to deal with similar situations. And of course, the Chair and the Staff of Parliament looks to Erskine May. I will refer to Erskine May now for the benefit of members and the public. The response that was submitted to or addressed to me yesterday evening contains serial breach of Standing Order 38.5, imputing improper motives to the Chair. It is also a breach of Standing Order 38.8, which questions the conduct of the Chair. This is not the first time this has occurred. It as well constitutes a libel on the chair and calls into question as well breach of parliamentary privileges. I will now direct you to Erskine May. Erskine May at paragraph 12.1 says, when any of these rights and immunities is disregarded or attacked, the offense is called a breach of privilege. Each house can claim the right to address these contempts. These are actions which, while not breaches of any specific privileges, it impedes the, the performance of its functions or it's an offense against the authority or dignity of the House of its members, such as disobedience to its legitimate commands or libels upon itself. In order to address the matter properly, it really is a matter for the Privileges Committee. Pursuant to the Standing Order of 74.5. It has been a flagrant display of disrespect to the House in particular and to the Chair. That will be a matter for a privileges committee's consideration. Subsequent to that, it should be noted, and the record will reflect, that in addition to being a blatant disregard for the respect of the chair and the authority of the chair, it is simply false. The record in this house will show that both sides of this House disagree vehemently sometimes with the decisions that this Chair takes. 
and the record will also show that this chair is okay with you disagreeing with the chair. That is democracy, but my ruling is final. If you have, if any member has an issue with the ruling of the chair, instead of ad hominem attacks, instead of flagrant dis display of disrespect and bringing the House into disrepute, what should be done by any member is to use the right afforded to that member. Subsequently, this morning at one hour, approximately before the start of this meeting, there has been a privilege motion presented. That privilege motion has me, the chair, as the subject matter. That motion has been lodged by the Leader of Opposition. Therefore, it would not be appropriate for me to preside over a privilege motion. As we all know, as members of the House, privilege motion trumps all business. Therefore, I will now vacate the seat as chair and invite the deputy speaker to take over. Good morning. We have a privileged motion before us, so I now call on the leader of the opposition to state briefly the facts to which he wishes to draw the attention of the House and the grounds on which he believes that those facts affect the privilege of the House. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Pleasant good morning to you and all colleagues, wonderful people from Belmopan and Cayo, and all of my standard bearers that are in attendance from the south to Cayo to city, etc. Mr. Speaker, the privilege motion that is before us arises based on Standing Order 29, 1, 2, and 7, which allows a member to raise matters relating to privileges in the House. And the matter at hand, Mr. Speaker, is the erroneous and most regrettable decision to stop me from presenting the no-confidence motion against the Prime Minister and his government at today's sitting. Mr. Speaker, unlike some of the elitists on that side, this house does not belong to the rich and powerful and the political cronies. This house belongs to the people. Speaker, and as the leader of the of opposition, Mr. Speaker, as the leader of the opposition, on, on I of, represent 31 Mr. Speaker, constituencies, needs, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker. The, what the is leader, the point of order? That, um, what is the point of order? The point of order is that at this, you, but you need to sit down you first. I can't sit until yes, you, you say sit. a point of it's order. For me to decide. What is the point of order? Mr. Speaker. Go ahead, Prime Minister. The point of order, Mr. Speaker, is the leader is presenting a, a motion but he is Mr. Speaker, on a point of order, finish, man. the standing Can orders are right here. If you are going to claim a Wait. point of order, Wait. give us the number Wait. of the point in order. You can't just say point of order. On a privileged motion, he needs to read his privileged motion on the act for TV. He needs to just read the privileged motion so that we can discuss it. Not coming on up on TV right now. A panel documentary. Leader of the opposition. 
Please go ahead and read your uh, motion. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this, this, this poor excuse for a Prime Minister has been here for 30 years. And he should know better. He should know better that when you rise on a point of order, there is a standing order book, Mr. Speaker. And let me, let me, let me educate you, since maybe it's been so long that you have forgotten. When I, when I present my notice Mr. of Speaker, motion, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, on a point of order. Mr. Speaker, on a point of order. What is the Mr. Point speaker, of order? on a point of order. I will address the Speaker, Leader of the Opposition, not you. 38-1. Stick point of to point. the contents of your debate. You are supposed to read your privileged motion. Read the motion. Don't go all over the place, man. Read your motion and let the Speaker make a decision. That is what you're here to do. Not act for the camera. Come on. Yes, yes, leader, leader of the opposition. Leader of the opposition. Mr. Speaker, hold on, hold on. I can't get into the content of my privileged motion because they keep interrupting me as oh. if they're in God. I will ask them, but they're, they're, it's okay for them to stand on a point of order. Indeed, but please. But I haven't even gotten into the, the text of my privileged motion. The same way that all of you, when you speak, are allowed to give context and allowed to lay out your case, I am laying out mine. What is supposed to happen? Mr. Speaker, what is supposed to happen according to the notice of the motion? The Speaker is supposed to call me into her office and go over the motion with me, and then I pro pro proceed with the motion. But that did not happen. So when you talk about what the standing orders are, clearly you don't know. And I, this is my second privilege motion. And the last privilege motion, she proceeded over it, and she was the subject of it as well. But anyway, the opposition, continue. please continue with, Thank you. with your motion. As I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, and there are standing orders against that, against interruptions. But, Mr. Speaker, the standing order 29-7 allows me no more than 15 minutes to discuss what I believe is a violation of my privileges. It doesn't tell you how I should go about doing that. So stop interrupting. Who would keep the clock? Anyway, Mr. Speaker, as I was saying, the effect, the effect of the decision to deny the leader of the opposition the ability to present a no-confidence motion is in essence silencing the opposition Mr. Speaker, this is what happens in banana republics. This is what happens in fascist states, Mr. Speaker. And this could have been prevented, Mr. Speaker, because the standing orders allow standing order um, 25B. I never know you could read Kaya South, but 25B. Members, that is a Please standing order, 48, 48B is a standing order that you can't make noise on that side. But, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the Speaker could have altered the no confidence motion. There were minor alterations that could have been done. Because the difference between saying the Prime Minister is guilty of malfeasance and non-feasance could have been it is an allegation and it is a legitimate allegation mr speaker that is being investigated by the senate the majority actually the unanimous senate voted to investigate this portico agreement from its genesis with the former minister mr also speaker the prime minister mr office. speaker on a point of so, order on so, a point of order what's your point of order 38 one let the leader of the opposition know, confine his debate to the subject. He has a privileged motion. Read the motion. Read the motion. He has still not read the motion. He has still not read the motion. Go ahead and read the motion so that you can make a decision, Mr. Speaker. Point accepted. Please Mr. stick Speaker, to the motion. This is, That's how I, this is what I submitted to the Speaker, and I am allowed 15 minutes 
to yeah. make my arguments. But it's but out. They 15 minutes out. They keep interrupting Please finish me. up. Finish Thank up. You. Mr. Speaker, will he continue or will you make a we, ruling we on this point? To, to finish up. Maybe finish he wants up. his 15 minutes of fame, not the way he wants for the camera, but that's all he's going to get. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Go ahead. Okay. If you would stop interrupting me, then I could finish. Show some decorum. Oh, I forgot. You're from a garrison constituency. So you're not of the caliber, according to the member from Kaya South. Yeah. But as I was saying, Mr. Speaker, we have all this talk about the House and the institution of the chair. I learned this. I learned this. Mr. Speaker, on the point of Members. order 48B, does not allow Mem the member from Cayo South to keep screaming from across the floor. Yes, please, please allow him to finish his, his motion, presentation. Please, you are distracting him, so... Because of time, please allow him. Please finish Thank up. Thank you. So, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you learn in the fundamentals of parliamentary study that the institution of the chair is sacred, Speaker of the House. But this is not the first time that the Speaker of the House is making these erroneous decisions. And it impacts the ability of the opposition to effectively advocate on behalf of the Belizean people, Mr. Speaker. These are not arbitrary decisions that are being made. The, <clears throat> the speaker said how important the chair is and the type of prestige and the type of reverence that the chair deserves. That has to be demonstrated vice versa, Mr. Speaker. The considerations of the arguments that the members of the opposition would like to make before this honorable house. They have been earned. We were elected to be here. We were elected to speak on behalf of the Belizean people. They said the voice of the people is the voice of God. And we are their representation. So whenever, whenever, whenever we bring something to this honorable house, such as a no confidence motion, the speaker has an obligation to work with the opposition to ensure that there is not any violation of the standing orders, but at the same time that the opposition is allowed the freedom to represent the Belizean people who elected them in this honorable house. This is not a fascist state. This is not a dictatorship. This is a democracy, Mr. Speaker and the continued misapplication <clears throat> and misinterpretation of the standing orders is undermining our democracy. The standing order that was cited in the speaker's response as to uh, matters that are being litigated in the court, <clears throat> the standing order says that such matters should not be debated in a fashion that may prejudice them. So the speaker could, according to the standing orders, could have altered the no confidence motion in a fashion that would have satisfied the obligations of democracy. Shutting out the opposition is anti-democratic and it is fascist. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Well. Mr. Speaker, the motion, the motion is that the no confidence, member, the no member. confidence motion, be allowed to proceed with alterations, Mr. Speaker, as to address my privileges in this honourable house. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Leader of the opposition, after listening to your presentation. It is, it is my decision that your motion is not allowed, will not be allowed, because
And this is simply because, this is because your motion is inconsistent with the standing orders. You can, however, bring a motion at this house at any other time, providing that the motion does not contravene with the standing orders. So there will be no debate today. Okay. Papers. Mr. Speaker, at a point of order, a member from the gallery is threatening the chair. You need to make a decision. He cannot say that he will send somebody to move you. Mr. Speaker. Miss um, Beira, please. Yes, thank you. Hi. Member, member from Fort George. Member, leader of the opposition and member from Fort Charge. I, I did not hear what they say in the gallery, um, but let's, let's move on. I recognize the Prime Minister. Let's see. Honorable Jiglos. Yeah. Well, it's a Minister of Infrastructure and Development and Housing. Morning. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. I rise to present and lay on the table sessional paper number HR 211-1-13. George Price Highway Upgrading Project Section 6. San Ignacio Tong to San Jose Socots. If you may allow me, Mr. Speaker, I just want to give a little bit of background on the project. Mr. Speaker, this is the Caracol project that started from Georgeville to the intersection tripartite and then it goes on to join to another village coming out of San Ignacio, which is San Antonio. And then it proceeds to the Pinal line. And then it proceeds all the way from the Pinal line to the Caracol archaeological site. The first phase of this project, Mr. Speaker, has been substantially completed. And the government of Belize has received a savings of $17 million. The second phase of the project, Mr. Speaker, is ongoing. I'm being disturbed by the members upper side. The second phase of the project, Mr. Speaker, is an ongoing project. And the ministry estimates that at the conclusion of that project, we will be saving approximately $27 million in its entirety. Mr. Speaker, since the People's United Party took the administration of the finances of this government, with the blessing of the Prime Minister, the technical staff, the entire staff of the MIDH has been working diligently to save the Belizean people money. One project. $27 million saved. What are we doing with the savings, Mr. Speaker? Well, with the blessing of the Prime Minister and the Ministry of Finance, we engage the lending institution, OFID. We explain to them that to complete the George Price project, which started from the Roaring Creek Bridge, right now presently reached 
the entrance of San Ignacio, that we would like to continue the project from San Ignacio to Benque Viejo. Ofid gave us no objection. We put the project out to tender. The tender was run by a company called Belize Roadway Construction for a value of $26 million, $26,709,000, million, $339.38, which is a bit below the $27 million that we estimate will be the savings. MIDH, the cabinet, the government of Belize, the Prime Minister of this country, we are all proud that we can go out there and tell the Belizean people with facts, not Mickey Mouse connotations, with yeah. facts, this is not Disney, <laughs> that we are doing a road that will not cost the Belizean people a cent extra. Why was it important for me to explain the project with this detail, Mr. Speaker? It is important, and I said it yesterday publicly, it is important that one defends its turf with everything that one has. And the best defense, Mr. Speaker, is the truth. Mr. Speaker, this is a clear example. What a point of order, Mr. Speaker. I would like to refer uh, your attention, Mr. Speaker, to Standing Order 87 that deals with the matter of strangers, the host.